Hi everyone, I'm Giovanni Russo with Petersburg Solution, and we're we're back much sooner than expected. Sorry about that. All right, so you all are performing. No. Sure. I'm sorry. I'm a dinner. Call you right back. I gotta do this They came all the way down from Wisconsin. Okay, He's amazing. The, um, star acts tonight. Okay. So. All right. Um, so tell us um, about how did you um, how did you come across uh, Misty? Uh, shit, she got plugged with my pops or whatever. My pops called me down to the studio. She, like shit, go crazy. Shit, I went crazy. She started fucking with me. Okay, very good. So what are you performing tonight? Shit, I'm. Uh, I ain't gonna leak shit, but I'm. Shit, I'm gonna turn this motherfucker up all the way down. What's all love right. or no love? Ding ding ding, ding all the way down. All right, very good. You came from uh, from where again? Medina. Uh, what, uh, what state did you come from? Uh, Wisconsin. Okay. All right, very good. Well, thanks for coming down. We really appreciate it. All the way down. All right. All right. All right, so what's your name? I'll be Mustafa Kamo Il. All right. And so are you performing? performing? No, I'm just doing a speech. Okay. All right, so um, what are you going to be speaking about? Uh, an identity crisis within our people. Okay. And um, what made you uh, choose to speak on that subject? Because our people need to know who they are. They need to know the knowledge itself. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. And so, um, how long have you been doing these performances? Long time. Okay. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming out here. All the way down. All right. Sorry about that. We did that impromptu break down <laughs> only to come right back out here all right so much right um so what type of events do you have planned for um petersburg solution in the near future <laughs> oh, right. well um monday we're supposed to be having um an interview with alex Boho. um i will be in told? yeah that's i didn't it. know that did i say it wrong yes Oh, um, say his name right. Beck told. I was supposed to be um interviewing him. Um, he's hosting a a um community meditation event after the election that we the community most definitely needs because after the election, pretty much we're gonna be upset. Pretty much some people are gonna be upset. Some people are gonna go into depression. Some people are gonna, you know. Oh God, don't predict all that. <laughs> So um, we're going to have, a, um, I'm going to sit down with him tomorrow and discuss um, his I organization. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, when was this plan? I plan, Surprise. I mean, I talked, well, I'm resting. I talked to him today. Okay. So, yeah, so I'll be talking to him at one, um, okay. at okay. one, <laughs> at one o'clock tomorrow. Well, They're I learned something. I, the communications director, learned something about what the group is doing. <laughs> okay. I should let Giovanni know first. I, yeah, I, I'm chopped liver. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a very important person in Petersburg. He, he Petersburg needs meditation. So, um, what what does he do exactly? Um, is it like a? I mean, does he do this by himself? Does he have a practice, or um, a business doing this? Well, I, I specifically know. When I when I read his title, it says Kung Fu, so I don't know if he does. Oh yeah, I, I, um, okay. meditation. Uh, right. so, so that's. I mean, I I know of him. Um, I. I I think I'm kind of surprised by the interview, but good, good. <laughs> right, I planned this interview on my own. That's okay. I, it, I it is something that's needed um, for the community. Um, also, cities. What? Production's harassing. Me. Production needs to go back in the building. <laughs> no. Do you have a ticket? Yes, ma'am. But no. Um, for cities like cities like um, Petersburg um, that do have um, um, poverty and a lot of similar cities <laughs> um, do tend to um, deal with trauma, whereby <laughs> having meditation services would be necessary in there. So what are you looking forward to the most um, tonight? Um, looking forward to the most. Um, 
black music, black music, um, in a historical black town, no city. Um, that's really pretty much what I'm looking forward to. Black talent, um, black young talent being showcased in a positive way. Ignore him, he's, he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the, the year's winding down. Um, so, so far, um, Hugebrook Solution is, uh, I think this started April 2019. <laughs> Hold on, Feather, see this. <laughs> That's all love. It's good to see. Um, but yeah, so April 2019, I think, is when the group started. Um, it began as just a Facebook group <laughs> trying to, sorry about that. Um, just trying to come up with solutions for how to solve things in the community versus just pitching sessions, if I can say that, that others <laughs> appear to be really good at doing. Um, you know, it grew from there to, you know, doing interviews. We met with, um, you know, a number of city council candidates. Um, I think, did we meet with all the challengers? Yeah, I think all the city, all the city council challengers right now in Petersburg. Um, some new businesses, um, Sweet Bliss Cafe, that I've, I think I've now officially tried all the lattes on the menu. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, to being out in the covering events like this. I mean, I, I think that when I first started, I felt that I thought my role was just going to be like Facebook moderator. Um, I didn't exactly expect, you know, to be mic'd up outside, but, you know, such is life. You know, plenty of uh, <laughs> plenty of unexpected uh, twists and turns going on. <laughs> I mean, just as again, how we managed to come across, you know, Misty Blanco. I, I will say that when I was at the event, Leon Benjamin's event outside, that um, I did see her walking past, and I said, "Don't know who that is," and I feel like it's someone I probably should know. And um, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> how that turned out. Someone who I apparently already knew, you know, uh, many moons ago, um, you know, in a past life on reality TV. Show, TV. <laughs> and, and again, I didn't expect, you know, leaving a major city like DC and coming down here and this be the place where I run into someone like this. You always have some other cities. You always, you always can see a celebrity or um, at the weirdest places. Yeah, if you say so. I seen a celebrity at the, um, I think I seen it, a celebrity up in D.C., up in the, at the Amtrak, um, the National, what is it called, D.C.? Union Station. Station. So. Well, that's possible. But look, the year's winding now. Uh, what's in store for uh, Petersburg Solution in 2021? Um, I'm asking because, you know, you've already thrown a couple of surprises at us, including uh, tomorrow's, um, you know, monkey wrench being thrown. But, <laughs> well, um, I think moving forward, we're, we're going to try to interview more local, local businesses, um, definitely in Old Town. Not only Old Town, Petersburg is more than Old Town Petersburg. Um, we're gonna start um, interviewing. Um, um, I want to give out that. Well, any, I don't want to give up the, the the interview that you're gonna be doing soon. Devonny is gonna have an interview did soon. I, did I set up something? Yeah, he set up a a, a very important interview. Um, you you're gonna see that soon. Um, we're, That's sad. <laughs> we also will be on um, Old Town edition. Um, hometown hero edition um for um um Peter's Race Solution too. We'll be doing um articles um based on um our first one will be with um Trey Songs. Um I think the other um 
I think the other um people will be um other other people that supported other um celebrities and um people's work. Did we put in Blair Underwood in here? I think we did. We did. I, I did. You sure? I did. I put in. Don't make um, me check. I put in Blair. <laughs> no, no, I just I, I just thought about that. I didn't put the I didn't put the one did the um, the picture. Uh -huh. I didn't put everybody. Put, I just put um Trace on picture. That's the article we do on first. <laughs> It's okay. I, I just thought about that. I don't know that many of them, but you know, we have. Um, he was a favorite of mine. Um, we have um, a lot of people of this one people, but um, um, in Richmond, um, that has um, artists. And we have um, Trey songs. I think. Um, and look, you mentioned you mentioned um, a big interview that I have, and it's funny because um, I've been keeping a tight calendar. And I do not recall having one scheduled. Yeah, apparently I have an, an interview schedule, and I don't know what it is. I don't. Yeah, you know, I, I keep a tight schedule. I, I forget. Well, if, I'm you just... if, if you don't know what the interview is, I will most definitely show up to the interview and be the interviewer. If he doesn't know what the, the interview he has. Planned. Oh, it's in my calendar. I just, I, I just have to look at it. I'm just saying. I just forgot. <laughs> I mean, I've been having stuff every day. I mean, yesterday, like I had a free afternoon, and I was like so excited. Um, I came home and I said, oh my God, I have all this stuff I'm going to do. I think I laid down and fell asleep and did nothing. <laughs> and it actually felt great. <laughs> nothing up until today. <laughs> oh my God, I don't even remember what the event was. Oh. Benjamin coming up. We're going to most definitely interview him. Oh yeah. I don't even know, I don't even know who he drives. I should know. I think he has a truck. Um, Leon Benjamin, he's the, um, the candidate for war. No. I'm gonna say Ward. Um, District Four. Um, he's going against um, Leon Benjamin. Leon Benjamin. I'm sorry, Don McKeachin. <laughs> yeah, Don McKeachin. Is that him walking? Yeah. Oh, okay. I haven't seen this man absolutely everywhere um, lately. <laughs> so, hey, Mr. Leon Benjamin. Benjamin. <laughs> Hi. I'm telling uh, <laughs> how has your campaign been going? Oh, uh, things are going things are going great. We're going down to the wire, and uh, we're just trying to meet everybody and talk to everybody, and whoever want to listen uh, to to what we have to offer, which is uh, jobs, uh, education reform. I call it the money follows a child, entrepreneurship, mentorship programs, uh, second chance programs through the Criminal Justice Reform First Step Act. Also, opportunity zones. We want to be able to pour investments back into the community, and so we're just reaching out and been knocking on a lot of doors, of course, and uh, just a lot of events. I've been seeing you everywhere. A lot, a lot of events. Uh, we we just doing what we have to do to stay on the ground, keeping our so to speak our face to the pavement. Yeah. We'll look up on November fourth. <laughs> I wanted to ask, how did you so? How did you and uh, Misty Blanco manage to um, make a connection? Well, I, uh, I met her through a a, uh, a friend, uh, delegate Carrie. Okay. Introduced us, uh, just saying how her heart was to reach out um, to the young African American community about uh, conservative values. And it's not every day that you have you know a rapper and a reality star uh, meeting with a, a Republican <laughs> congressional candidate. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I. I said, Lord, if, if, if that's what you want to do and uh, and we need to reach out to everybody because this is what's going on right now. Yes. Um, the Republican Party needs to be the party that people understand uh, to, to reach out to to, to uh, community activism, solving problems, not just talking about them. We we want to bring solutions and you can't bring solutions to the table if you don't want to engage people. Right. So I'm I'm like this. I might not know how to rap, but <laughs> but I definitely want to meet some rappers. It's okay, know? And, and it worked out perfectly. I tried one time with my son, but he is much <laughs> much better than me. And I'll just mention, you know, I, I'm a writer and I do um, celebrity news, and it's interesting that I told her that 
I had been randomly Googling the um, uh, the show that she was on, just uh, looking to see if there's any news that I could happen to stumble across the uh -huh, cover. Uh -huh. And lo and behold, I was not expecting to go to an event of yours yeah. around the corner and see this woman outside. So this is perfect. Yeah. And you managed to help me do my job as well. Well, I'm supposed to be on stage, I guess, around 8 o'clock. So... Man, it's good to see you, man. Absolutely. And we will be seeing each other again. You know, we don't we don't ever seem to be too far away from each other. Yeah, God is good, man. Look, let's do it. Let's seal the deal. November 3rd, get out the vote. Don't stay home. Don't say your your vote is not worth anything. It is. Your vote is your voice. It's also your worship, too. Choose the platform that's going to represent you uh, at the end of the day. My platform represents family. It represents life. It represents jobs. It represents safety in our communities. It represents being, I call it like this, having a voice at the table. If you're African-American, you need a voice at the table. A wise woman said this, either you're at the table or you're on the menu, okay? It's time to have a seat at the table. Voting for Leon Benjamin in this race right here will ensure you to have a seat at the table. Let me be your voice. Let me be your servant that represents you in Congress on November 3rd. God bless. Okay. And this man has been working hard for this race. I can absolutely attest to that. <laughs> that was Le Leon Benjamin. Yep, congressional seat, uh, fourth district um, congressional seat against um, Don McEachin. And this is his hometown as well. Um, Richmond, I think that he's lived here some 20 some years. I could say, don't hold me to that number, <laughs> but he, he's a, a Richmond hometown guy. Um, I have questions for him, but I wasn't able to ask him. But I, I'll ask him next time. So what do we have um, to look forward to for Petersburg Solution in next year? Um, Sorry, that, that, was what, uh, that was what you were answering before he uh, <laughs> came up and interrupted. Uh, pretty much we're just going to focus on solutions, solutions for the city. Um, hopefully November the 4th is the start to the solutions. Um, once we figure out who won and um, once we figure out who won, then we can move on to, to see how the person that won can interact that agenda and, and see does that does their agenda match what we want as a people. That's all that matters. We always get into Republican and Democrat. That doesn't matter at the end of the day. Who represents your agenda? If you are um if you are a conservative, black people are normally in uh, I gotta explain that. Well they are, are always cons to be naturally um, conservative. conservative. So pretty much Oh, I don't. I don't understand why we got into this uh, this place that we are um, political heads. We need to get to the point that we are voting based on agendas, uh, based on policies, and voting based on our best interests. So, um, get out and vote on, on November third. If you didn't already get out and vote, um, already an early voter. I think uh, it was mentioned that I think forty percent of people voted an early voter. I think I could be quoted on that. I don't know. It was a large get, percentage, whatever large, the number is. Large percentage. So, um, yes, this is um, very, very great. Um, the fact that Leon Benjamin reached out to a, um, a, dem a demographic that normally, I don't want to bash people, but normally um, well, Republicans it's, it's don't reach just, out to. It's not expected. Um, it, it's not expected. And again, just the fact that she um, has been so willing um, to work with him and others. Again, Kerry Coiner is a, a Republican as well. Um, it, you know, my mouth was open at this because this is, we don't see this. <laughs> you know, we don't have this type of engagement of, um, you know, those two groups meeting with each other. But, um, you know, it's, it, it's progress. Um, you know, uh, progress that it seems to have happened uh, much sooner than I would have expected. <laughs> It's history. It reminds me. It reminds me of what could happen on the commission if people vote yes on on the amendment. And we doesn't have bipartisan. Um, we need a bipartisan commission or a committee to um to draw up district lines. Um, 
I already said I don't want to, you know, be a dos a doorstep, but I'm I'm a doorstep now. I'm, I'm a I'm <laughs> okay. I voted yes on Amendment One because it will help stop pretty much stop bias politics. It takes the partisan fighting out of things. Right. It's supposed to be that. I I just will say, just in front of the subject, the objection that I've noticed was based on how that was done. You know, some of some of the more specifics, the the, the you know nitty gritty details. Personally, I would prefer this over um, what we currently have. But you know, we'll see what the voters think. Um, you know, we'll see what they think on November third, and you know, hopefully, I think our local races we shouldn't have trouble with the the vote count. Um, you know, it's the national one that we might not know until like spring. <laughs> God forbid. I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> oh, um, come over here. So, um, yeah. Um, uh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, yeah, Benjamin's supposed to be um, speaking any minute. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I actually uh, got as, as many of the names as I um, as I could. Some others may have um, escaped me. I, I watched. I was watching auditions um, that they had. So you know, a number of them, a number of the artists have already. Uh, no, a number of them I feel like I've already, you know, gotten <laughs> acquainted with before they, you know, before they showed up because I recognized a lot of the faces. Oh, she looks nice. <laughs> yeah. Are you performing? Okay. Sure. Uh, Minister Khalif Moabel. Okay. And um, you said you were presenting? Yeah, yeah. I'm one of the uh, speakers tonight. You know, uh, one of Misty Blanco's partners. Okay. You know, in this uh, whole great affair, you know, that's how we roll it, man. You know, we up here rocking the vote and uh, making sure that we get people out there to the polls to make sure that their voices and their and their and their and their uh, their choice counts. Absolutely. Right? Yes, sir. How's working with Ms. Blanco? Oh, that's my girl. You know what I'm saying? She, she, she's a pleasure. It's an honor and pleasure to work with my sister. Okay. You know, we're in full support of her. You know, we got Moors all over the world in support of her. She got over five million people backing her. Okay. So uh, we're gonna make sure whatever she do is a is a is a, is a success. Absolutely. Without doubt or contradiction. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. Best of luck inside. Right, Appreciate yes. it, sir. Thanks. <clears throat> so just another fun fact. Um, Again, Misty came from making the band. Um, the first, um, the first show uh, was exactly 20 years ago. Um, o Town was the group. Um, don't know what you were doing back then. I think we were both in diapers. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but um, you know, Diddy came in for the, the first season. I forgot who ran that one. Um, the second through the fourth was Diddy as the. Um, as the lead of it. And it was just announced last year that um, Making the Band will be making a return um, I, sometime soon. I think it might be in 2021. And um, the process that Misty did as far as getting performers for tonight, where, as we had said, she came to Richmond. She had auditions. Um, she definitely put the artist through the ringer um, <laughs> in having them practice, um, you know, performing, exercising, working out, all that good stuff. Um, you know, to show that she was getting them stage ready. Um, sort of coming in full circle with her own life as far as how she got put on. Except I, I forgot to ask her. I wanted to ask her if she, uh, you know, did she make anyone like go walk to Brooklyn for cheesecake? So, I mean, like Diddy did. Did you, you ever heard of that story? I did. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the main thing you talk about when you talk about Definitely the early season. I, I, remember, I, I remember that episode fondly. And it was also part of why some of the other uh, band members uh, weren't necessarily fond of her. She had to leave at a particular point in time. She had discovered that she had a sister who um, was murdered. But for obvious reasons, you leave because of that. 
and she didn't have to go through things like the the washing cars, <laughs> the 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 Brooklyn cheesecake walk. The others had to do. Um, so he said, you know, about putting someone on the album. Well, no, she has to go through the same thing that we did. Absolutely not. <laughs> So I gotta say it's, it's it's a great turnout. I mean, it's a lot. I mean, the turnout is great. So um, normally you say, you see people say African Americans don't support each other. It's a lot of support in the building tonight. So and I want to. Um, it's, it's it's great to see. And that's why I'm here. I mean, you know, Leon Benjamin is someone that I've supported or that I do support. And you know, if he's doing something and I'm asked asked to take part in it, you know, boom, I'm here. You know, it's he's it, and I've we've been in each other's presence um plenty i feel like all over this region at this point <laughs> but yeah he's supposed to be speaking soon um i can't wait just like you know can't wait till election day and hopefully hopefully he wins and it would be interesting you know wouldn't it be something if miss blanco happens to be pulled into the new ver the new season or new iteration of making the band it's That'd always, be something. It, sometimes it's always important to add the OGs to the um the new franchises because it, it gives some type of originality to it. So maybe that that would be a great idea that try to bring out maybe they could be the judges, but I really do think that his sons are gonna be the new judges of that song. I think I think that's the, the new idea. I actually have no idea. <laughs> but I do know for a fact that MTV has um when it comes to reboots, it doesn't it doesn't work out. Um, I think punk was a disaster. Um, uh, uh, come on, give me some more stuff. Punk was a disaster. Um, the Hills, the Hills reboot was a disaster. I didn't know that there was a reboot of that. Wait a minute, hold on. That show is that old that warrants a reboot? Oh God. Yes. Oh. The reboot actually instead of them being teenagers and uh, young adults, they're like grown adults, pretty much um doing the same stuff they were doing when it was about making someone feel old. That show was it was so silly because that was like oh seven, I think. And so at the same time, there was a debate, people didn't know whether it was a reality show or real. I don't know if you recall any of that, which was complete, which was, yes, it's obviously scripted, I guess now, because there's so much reality TV, we know it when we see it. Don't get me started on the real world reboot. But people, oh my God, that was horrible. But people were legitimately, literally, the article was written, and I remember it was coming out like after every episode, asking whether or not, is it real, is it, you know, is this a reality show, but yeah. But I can't believe that I, I, I can't believe was. that that came back. That is so. Yeah, it wasn't. It was scripted. But I was like, most definitely scripted. I just can't believe. Oh. Yeah, turn on. <laughs> that one just threw me off. That 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 was something that had a reboot. They got so many reboots coming out. Um, but it'd be nice if she if that disaster is a reboot. Reboots. Well, we're gonna okay. We're gonna try and be positive about this one. Yes. Oh, sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do we speak to him? Yeah. Oh, we just spoke for a second. <laughs> yes, we just did. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, yes, I'm so happy. Thank you. I'm trying to look. I'm still got the, I got the sneakers on. I ain't put my heels on yet. work working in a ball gown, which is amazing. Yes. <laughs> it's quite impressive. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you so much. But I have Minister Khalif here all the way from Wisconsin. He's uh, my Moore's brother, and he's here to speak of the importance of us with our nationality, um, to know who we are as a people. Yes. And um, I'm just blessed that he came down here. Yes. Same here. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's my girl, man. Right. His, his son is actually performing yeah. one of the superstars. Medina. Okay. He did his interview already. Okay, so, right, right. Yeah. Okay, I didn't, didn't know that was your son. So if you want to speak to him about some things that may be going on in Wisconsin or, you know, so Virginia can understand what's going on out there. He's yes. a very powerful leader out there. Okay. Mm-hmm. By all means, tell us about your work there. Ooh, oh, I'm a uh, side part mm-hmm. in the body. It's okay. So uh, I'm a community organizer. I run about, I mean, like nine or ten organizations. Uh okay. I founded about 10 organizations and then uh, 
you know, we, we, you know, I'm a national speaker around mass incarceration, okay. uh, racial inequality, racial injustice, police brutality. Yeah. You know, we just stand with, we just stand with the people 100%. Okay. Um, what are your thoughts on, um, you know, the 2020, if anything, should be your year as far as, um, you know, subject matter and, and dealing with solutions. 2020 um, over. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> we at the close of that demonstration, you yeah. know. When you, when you mentioned mass hello one second. Um, speaking on mass incarceration, uh, how do you feel about um, the First Step Act? You think that helps the mass incarceration? The, or too much, you know, with it. The First Step Act was a band aid on a larger issue, right? So we still we still locking our people up in masses. We still taking up over forty seven percent of the prison system. We take up twelve point two percent of the United States population. You know, anytime you locking people up more. Uh, double or triple, quadruple the population itself, then you know, you know that's an epidemic. Right. You know, we talking about coronavirus and things of that nature, but we're really talking about a real epidemic. Uh, aside from a pandemic and people getting sick and unhealthy and things of that nature, we got men and women being locked up in masses and the, and, and, and the sisters, uh, Asiatic women, the so-called black woman is under attack even, even, even more so now because the black man has been neutralized. The so-called black right. man, right. So what do you think, uh, what type of solutions would you have in, in dealing with this? Free them all. Free them all. You know, it's all of us or none. You know, we're not freeing some, we're not freeing a few, we freeing them all, Understood. you know? And at the end of the day, you know, brothers come home and they did their time, you know, they they, they, they paid they whatever debt to society, mm -hmm. they need to come home, they need to have the right to vote. Not only do they need to have the right to vote, they need to have the right to fair housing, the right to fair jobs, mm -hmm. the right to live a quality life, a quality living. That is imperative for our people to have a successful transition back into the community and become positive and productive role models in society. When you put up all of these barriers up against them, it keeps the frustration high. And not only does it keep the frustration high, but it also keeps them in a mindset of wanting to commit crimes, crimes and be criminals. Absolutely. Right. So you can't you can't you can't criticize the people for doing what they for doing what they need to do to survive right. when you set up every barrier in the world to keep them out. Yeah, and especially as far as trying to re-enter into society. Absolutely. Um, you know, about the number of barriers there, whether it's just the checking the box, you know, saying that you've had a prior yeah. conviction. Well, banning the box is just one, 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 one yeah, small one factor in, 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 in a large spectrum of problems. You know, you can ban the box, but they still gonna go and see cap and check you out. Yeah. You know, you know, you pick you 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 uh you check that black box, that African American box. That's just like a tag. This is like a felony tag on you. So they're gonna more they're gonna more so investigate that because of the nationality that you chose, right. you know. And that right there is a problem within itself. That's what we talk about racial inequality and racial injustice. And I forget what was the, pro what was the program that you mentioned checking um, after you you know if they get rid of the ban you know do the ban the box um, that they can still check your name somewhere. What was the name of that? We call we we, we, we talking about allowing people to vote mm -hmm. yeah when they come home from paying their debt to society. Right, right. You know, like I said, it's all of us or none, not some. You know, you can't pick and choose. You can't, you can't, you can't cherry pick uh, who you want to help and who you don't want to help. You know, yeah. when you, when you break people and you, and you, and you know, these people are broken. <laughs> when you break people and you know, these people are broken, you got to give them the tools to fix themselves. Right. What would you like to see us working on in 2021? What I would like to see that uh, us working on in 2021 is freeing them all. Free them all. Number one, be honest about the racial disparities in this country, the redlining, all of the all of the multiplicity of attacks that our people are under from them flooding our communities with drugs and weapons. I've never seen a brother manufacture a weapon. We don't got plants like that, but our community is filled with them. But you want to lock me up and give me a felony for carrying a gun. That's unsanctioned that you dumped in my neighborhood. I mean, that stuff don't make no I'm sense. Man. A man of uh, possession charges. Possession charge or any of that. I got a right to protect myself just like anybody oh, absolutely. else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? You don't you don't disarm me and keep me under attack and you want to kill me. You know what I'm saying? And gun me down in the street unjustly, but I can't defend myself. That's you true. carrying guns every day on your hip trying to protect yourself and your people. What about me and mine? So do you feel that um do you feel that uh um mass incarceration started with the nineteen ninety four crime bill? I think that amplified mass incarceration. Mass incarceration started with the slave codes, the Christian black slave codes and the vagrancy laws and the literacy laws. That's what started mass incarceration. The boost of it happened at the height of the civil rights movement. 
speaking right. books. I haven't heard uh, big tough know, on crime and all that type of stuff. The, uh, the 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 war on drugs, the fake war on drugs. Before it was any drugs in the community, before it was even an epidemic, it was a war on drugs already, and they was targeting so called ghettos. Yeah. I haven't heard of it, heard anything mentioned about uh, modern vagrancy laws, you know, because it's just, mm -hmm. you know, they've it's just the same thing. It's migrated around. into different names. Right. You know, it's just slavery by another name. And that's where we at. You know, yes. that's where we at with it. But thanks for, um, thanks for talking with us. And just wondering, is there a way we could find you online? Oh, yeah, definitely. All of us in Lund, Wisconsin, you can find me at W-I-A-O, what is it? Oh, fast. <laughs> I got a card for you, man. See here. Yep. W I A O U O N dot org. Okay. There we go right there. Minister Khalif Moabe. And that is literally we can I'll be sharing that online. <laughs> yeah. That's what we yeah, you can look at. Yeah, I mean everything we talked about, these are literally all of my favorite topics, all of what I'm trying to, you know, work on solutions for. Yes, indeed. Got, yes, you indeed. know, you've got your work cut out for you, but it's much appreciated. Oh, man, the work has been cut out, man. It's, the struggle <sighs> continues. You feel me? Yes. As long as the struggle is there, you'll see Khalif Hale. Yep. Okay. All right, Peace so up, appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, what's going on in there? <laughs> I just got educated. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. Slave codes, the vagrancy laws. Fun fact, the city of Atlanta decided to arrest. They, they decided to round up and arrest 9,000 people, homeless people in, right before the uh, Olympics in 96, for 96, I think, um, and gave them all one one way tickets out of town. Um, and, you know, we would think, what do you do? How do you deal with homeless? You put them in a shelter. You don't go and literally herd people in a park and arrest everyone but that was what happened and so that was some of what he was talking about so yeah um which is amazing because it literally took uh research of my own um to find that one out but it's it's quite common and we've had these types of vagrancy laws since you know slavery clear up until you know recent history so you know it it it, it can it, it goes by another name you know some of it it can, it can be as simple as loitering but um it, doesn't it does exist call it the modern day slavery yeah that's part of it yeah he, he educated me um I, look i'm 25 years old i'm learning um i need people like him to educate me on these issues and um i'm black but i don't know how things got started I, I, as far as i know that it got started with the 1994 um bill that joe biden signed uh, I, you know but I mean, these and these are things that you know existed before, and you know, on paper, like if you were to look at a loitering law, for instance, it seems like it makes sense, you know, or keeping a homeless person from sleeping inside of a park. Again, it seems to make sense until you actually look at you know the history of how this is handled. And again, going outside and deciding to round everybody up <laughs> at one time, um, you know, and they'll go send them somewhere else to be someone else's problem. And, and imagine being an impoverished person and being removed huh. I think so. and being removed from your community um you know and to be oh, moved the is calling me, so okay <laughs> and being moved some hundreds of miles away but that's that is definitely a thing that's been happening throughout history <laughs> see what's going on here what's Um, so, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. My phone, I'll be here. I think it's the policy. Don't round it up. What'd you say? Huh? Um, no, we're still here. Oh, you're still doing an interview? <laughs> yeah, still doing it. Oh, I didn't get an interview yet. Oh, sure, come over. <laughs> All right, then. Look amazing, by the way. Thank <laughs> What's your name? Uh, my name is Kenya Amir. Okay. And so, were you performing today? Yes, sir. I am performing. I'm performing. I'm the first one in line to perform. Okay. Uh, I came all the way down from Jersey. Okay. I'm really excited. I've been working with Misty for a while now. And okay. hey, man, look, shining lights behind me. We hit. <laughs>
I mean, that mask looks great. I mean, Thank you. You got a number of compliments. I, I noticed. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, it's the, I, I accentuate the, where is it, on this side, the eye. <laughs> so, um, how did you become, how did you and Misty um, become a thing? Uh, let's see, I met Misty in the summer. Um, I came down on a trip to Atlanta. We were shooting a, a video for this um, artist, Big Zen. Okay. Yes, uh, for Beauty Jam. So that, that was really dope. I came in as a camera guy, and then she realized I had some talent. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, you know, here I am. Yeah, but it's good Super to be able to, uh, 46 million uh, listens later. We're right here. Oh, amazing. That Okay, that's, that's an amazing feat there. And it's also good to be able to be able to work both in front of and behind the camera. Absolutely. Yeah. Working, yeah. working both sides, See, making their money. I, I honestly believe that, you, like, just taking complete control over my craft. So it's like, if I can really, if I, I started as a videographer, started as a producer, started as all these other things, I, I could really say I started as everything. <laughs> yeah, so. You need to get stuff done. I mean, you know, all this stuff, as you know, obviously is, is work. And trying to, and even like during COVID, I, I know that Kelly Rowland was saying, I think that she had to stop working because she didn't know how to do Oh um, yeah, man. But you know the thing that COVID COVID helped with is like I had time to really focus in and tap in on what I had to do, man. Mm -hmm. Like I, I really realized that this is really what I want to do. This is really who I am. This is really like how I walk, talk, and breathe is music. You feel yeah. me? So it's like there's no other. There is no other, right? right. It's just music. That's how it is for me. So I, mean, I was able to tap in during COVID and really just focus my energy right Yeah, now. she's got you down here from Jersey, but it's much appreciated. No, nah, she don't got me down here for Jersey. Oh, look, I came because <laughs> I trust Misty, right? Mm -hmm. Anything, listen, she told me to go to the moon. We got a show. <laughs> I'm at the fucking moon. <laughs> okay. Because look, we putting it together. We're going to keep putting it together. And this is a toy, right? We started in Petersburg, went to Wisconsin. Now we here in Richmond and... It's only gonna keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and we're gonna have our foots on these motherfuckers next <laughs> because nobody else is doing what we're doing right now. Misty TV, we really here. Yeah, I mean, this was this was a big thing in coming here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it was a big thing. Trials, tribulation, we all went through it to get here somehow, some way, but we all made a way, and now we here. Yeah, and so since you were already working with her, mm -hmm. you had to buy. I guess you bypassed all the auditions. My yeah, past was the audition. <laughs> I'll say my audition is just like, let's. she's my manager. So at the end of the right. day, I have, I'm, it's a constant audition. You feel yeah, me? You were, you were she's, before she's telling me like, okay, Kenya, go get a microphone. Go do this. Correct yourself this way. Do this, do this, do that. Right? If I'm not adhering to that, what's the point of me even having a manager? You feel me? You're right. She gives me great advice. And it's my job as an artist to take that advice and add it to my craft so I could perfect. She's Grammy nominated. I'm not yet, but I will be. Thanks. It, it, you know, that's how it's supposed to be. You're already calling it into effect. This is going to happen, man. It's not going to happen for just one song, two songs, three songs. Guess what, bro? I have one song released right now. That song has been listened to over 46 million times. One song. No videos. No nothing. Y'all don't see my face right now for a reason. Why? Because this is the first interview I've ever done. Yeah. And trust me, they're going to know. This is history right here. Yeah, I was wondering. You know, I saw you came by and I said, I need to know who that okay, is. It's just okay. like that. <laughs> you got the, what's your name again? Oh, I'm Giovanni. Giovanni. So Giovanni has the exclusive. Kenya Amir is fucking coming for the game. Be scared. It's like, nah, don't be scared. <laughs> know why? Because we're just dapper. We're dressed the way we're supposed to be. You feel me? Got suited and booted. This is not the first time I've been suited and booted. It's my look, you know? It's not just because it's a masquerade ball. Access the mask, right? Let y'all see the face one time for the one time. Ugh. It's just a look, you feel me? <laughs> and it stays that way. <laughs> My bad, I'm a ham. So outside of this, what do we have to look forward to? New projects. I've been working with Capital. Um, he's a producer who's been working with Split Star and a bunch of other people. Um, Misty has me pushing, and guess what? Uh, I guess I'll say it here. I have an album in the works. Okay. Yeah. So, singles, singles, singles. Stay tuned on the radio because I'm going to be playing on the radio very soon again. Very soon. Okay. Very, very soon. Can we see you perform tonight? Oh. <laughs> see. I'm going to just let y'all see. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Best of luck. Thank you, boss. <laughs> Absolutely.
Alright, one second, guys. Okay. <laughs> I'm never too far behind you. You know that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Of course, the weather just feels like it just dropped a little bit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did I hear something about a battery? That's just his, his battery on twenty percent. The laptop. Yeah. Okay. Mm, that can be worked around. <laughs> We're almost at election day. <laughs> Did I say Misty Blanca? So okay, I got it. I got it. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think I want to eavesdrop on uh, Leon Benjamin's interview here. Yeah. 
Yeah. And said, yeah, they were, uh, you got the road. Wow. Terms of door knocking and Hope Road in the campaign over here. Wow. Uh, yeah, we've been in Hope Road too. Voting for, you know, all of the Republicans, Wait, including you. Oh. So your name came up unprovoked. Oh, man. Wow. God bless awesome. you, man. I am. I'm just thankful. Oh, hello. I gotta get ready. All right, gotta get ready. Bless y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. <laughs> Leon has definitely been keeping me busy. <laughs> It's getting colder and colder out here. <laughs> Sonia, I could have given you an extra coat. You should have brought one. <laughs> I'm sure that dude made me think about things a little bit differently. I don't know. I feel like um, I was very ignorant to certain things when it came to that dude. Word. I mean, some of some of this stuff, I mean, the stuff is not taught either. Yeah. I mean, People say that all the time about how they're learning, you know, more about our history. And obviously, it's not taught for a reason. You know, it's so that you can be simply okay with things being the status quo. Right. And, you know, thinking that we're more so the problem than, um, you know, actual harmful laws being put into position. You know, you hear me talk about um, how policy matters, especially in knowing when elected officials are... Um, you know, creating harmful legislation. You hear, it, you hear it, but they don't go in detail. People always say they went into the um, black communities and um, took everybody off the streets because of the crack cocaine pandemic. It, was it? Um, I mean, there were times where, like in DC, they would literally, like, the police just locked up everyone in the corner. Like, they literally went and everybody who was outside was arrested, the whole corner. You know, it could have been up to like 100 people. Uh, seriously, I mean, there were neighborhoods where there were apartment buildings that the police had a list of names of tenants and you had to live there to go inside of the door. Um, the police were escorting people to and from their door. Um, and even just as recently as, and I've never encountered it, but um, DC had its jump out, um, what is it, the jump out squads where people would randomly be walking down the street and the police would jump out of vans with their tactical weapons aimed at them. Just because. And when I'd heard about that, I apologized to a community activist for anything I'd ever said about him and his opinions of the police. I mean, I think that if I was walking down the street and the police just decided to aim a weapon at me because they felt like, you know, I looked like I was up to something and needed to be searched, I think that I would probably have less than a favorable uh, view <laughs> on them as a group. So do you think that the new policies they put in um, at the... Um, I'm trying to figure out um, the new policies, the new laws that they put in into it. In, in Virginia? Yeah, do you think that would help with police reform? Okay. So I've actually not... You posted a list of laws, yeah. or a list of proposals, and I had not finished reading them. I glanced at it. So, nope, don't make me answer this on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> All right. But yes. Super, super But it is, um, what was I going to say? Um, <laughs> right. But yeah. Um, I'm not sure. I would have to hey, read those. Like that? Yeah. Oh, who is that? Misty? Um, is Kirsten? that her? Oh, let me go on. <laughs> she looks like her mom. <laughs> yeah, I, I hadn't read it. I mean, the, so there was one that stood out to me that I did ask um, Carrie Coiner about because she had, um, um, she zoomed into um, a meeting that I was in. And my question was, um, they wanted to have mental health professionals to um, show up with police for their um, police calls. Um, or at least when a 911 call comes to then call a therapist to go with them. Um, that time, that time that's lost there is, that's, that's not cool. Um, I'm looking for the article that the <laughs> press um, 
Okay. We're going to some more details now. We're going to discuss if, if you need to. Nice. You, look, you all look nice. <laughs> Great turnout, great turnout. Yes. Yeah. Great turnout. Absolutely. And there's still 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 headed still more coming in. <laughs> and um one second. <laughs> okay. Well, it says that um Northern signed the following bills that will reform policing. Oh, policing. It says, Governor Northern signed Senate Bill 5030, sponsored by Senator Law. Oh, Lord, don't read the whole thing. Okay. Um, um, well, so let's, let's go to the bill that our delegate in, in the 63rd District um, sponsored. She sponsored House Bill 5099, um, prohibiting law enforcement officers from seeking or executing a no knock search warrant with. Governor North and Senator Virginia becomes the third state in the nation to ban no knock warrants. So that's that's great. Um, I'm trying to think about some other things I see here. But if I were to play devil's advocate, um, one, I'm not a fan of uh, no knock warrants. Um, I also add that a friend of mine, um, an elected official, had recently reported having seven thousand dollars of damage to her home from a no knock warrant from police who there was no reason to go to her house. And I don't think that they gave her anything for that. <laughs> oh, production in here. Just checking what's going on. Um, do you think you could ask about tissue? It, it, it might be. Getting off of the camera to blow my nose. <laughs> yeah, I was going to keep talking about some other stuff. Um, I hope I don't catch a cold. Oh, another thing it says Governor Northern signed 